Okay, so to answer your question on uh, popularity of uh, influence, uh, what really starts is um, popularity. You cannot be influential if you're not popular. And at the same time, okay, as an artist, um, the measure for influence is um, in the number of people that, um, that uh, approach you to maybe collaborate, number one, people that approach you maybe to work together, people that approach you to maybe assist in pushing their brands and other stuff. That's now influence. Uh, popularity is when you just know. Um, uh, anyone can be popular in a day. If you create a sex tape, you can be popular. Uh, but will that cause influence? It doesn't. So. Um, what most artists don't understand and what most Zimbabwean artists don't understand is um, there is life after popularity. So most people you find them, they just want to have maybe one track known. Um, I'll tell you, okay, this is this, this, the, this the birth of uh, people who are known as one hit wonder where you have a person who has created only one song and they've they disappeared, they've created one skit, they've disappeared, they've created just one small thing. Um, you can create one small thing and become influential from it. I would say if somebody was to create a movie in Zimbabwe, a real movie in the Hollywood style, that person surely becomes influential because it takes a lot to create a movie. So there is need for people to, for artists, especially in Zimbabwe, to be taught on uh, popularity of uh, influence. And um, to me, uh, I can't say, okay, you know, I know most people would say if you become influential, um, you, you don't really know it yourself. You, yes, you, you, you get one or two calls coming in and saying, now we need to work with you, we need to do this. So you can't really say I've become influential, but you find yourself like there's always a creation of lists. Like I've seen a list of 100 most influential people in Zimbabwe, under 40, I've seen my name there. So surely that means somebody somewhere is thinking about me. I don't know who, but that someone is doing something somewhere. So influential, I influence is... Um, when someone somewhere is thinking about you for something, unlike uh, popularity, popularity is um, being known, be it for good or bad reasons. Um, I always talk of growth of comedy um, in Zimbabwe as um, as per individual. I've said it before. I'll keep on saying it. Um, you can't really say we have grown because there's 17, 20, 18, I don't know how many genres of comedy in Zimbabwe. Um, we have, okay, I, I don't know them by name because I, I didn't go to a comedy school to know these laws, but I only know the stand-up comedy, which is on its path to growth. Um, we have, we have uh, forefathers of, of, of this comedy, the likes of uh, Carl Joshua Nube, the likes of uh, Michael K, the likes of um, Edgar Langeveld. These guys came in. They didn't take it there. They took it, but to a very small audience. Yeah, I, I remember Carl did a one-man show which filled, I think it was a uh, rap theater. Yes, they took it there, they, they introduced it to the people, but now there is now need for someone to take it even bigger. I, I can tell you, if, if we talk of growth of uh, uh, stand-up comedy, now we, we have to mention a guy called um, Long John. Because uh, for Long John, okay, it's, uh, I'm talking of his performance as a Zimbabwean, no matter where he's performing it from, he's performing in South Africa mostly, but he has traveled to places like Uganda, other places. To me, that's growth. That's, um, that's the thing we talk of as growth, because he's representing Zimbabwe. Wherever he goes, he tells them, I'm from Zimbabwe. He makes people laugh. That's growth per individual. We also can talk of Doc Vikela. He's trying to make it move. He's trying to push it. I'm talking, this is stand-up comedy. Then comes the, the social media skits, which I believe I'm one of those people who have also laid the foundation for some people to continue doing it. Um, in that genre, I, I don't want to lie, growth has been seen, um, we, have, we have so many stables, we've got P.O. Box there, we've got Bus Stop there, we've got um, uh, the Comic Pasta, we've got um, other uh, 
uh, players in the social media skits and and you find it has even uh, revived uh, guys like Kafupi uh, who have now joined in because now they used to depend on on uh, on acting be it acting and street theater but now they have moved from acting and street theater and doing short um social media skits so for us the the social media players i believe we have seen so much growth we've seen as per, I'll always say, as per individual, uh, we've moved from, from having 5,000 followers to 10,000, to 30, to 100. There's, there's now Madam Boss, there's my TT, there's a lot. So growth has, has, has been seen. Putting things out on social media, uh, you, you understand it, you, you, yeah, though you're asking me the question for some people who don't understand. What happens is um, putting a, a video on social media, is not does not um, necessarily bring money it doesn't it doesn't have revenue especially on facebook youtube does give uh, revenue it pays back when you've registered your account what not what not but i'll tell you what the amounts that you get with the views that we get and it's it's, it's not it's not it's not sustainable what makes social media skit sustainable is your now your influence now we're going back to influence now people want you to push their brands people want you to to advertise for them people want you to use your audience as, as a marketing platform there starts uh, sustainability also we we have seen a lot of zimbabwean uh, comedians converting into masters of ceremony I, I i i started as a master of ceremony like i always tell people i started as a master of ceremony um before i became a social media power so what happens is you 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 get people calling you for their corporate gigs calling you to perform at the functions then you start making money out of it and i tell you what as for me, it has been sustainable. Um, freedom of expression, um, going to freedom of expression. We, we were so excited in the new dispensation. We thought the new dispensation would bring freedom of expression. But um, you know, it's, it's, it's politics. It's a lot of things. Um, and comedy, you don't know when you offend and when you make people laugh. And it is a known fact. This is this is a quote from me, the comic pastor. A true comedian will offend a few and entertain a number. So one way or the other, someone will be offended. Every joke offends someone, maybe because they are they are Christians, maybe because they are Muslims, maybe because they are political, maybe they post. so there's a lot. So you can't you can't really create a joke that does not offend someone. So that's where now we with the government needs to come in because most of us are registered people. We registered with the deeds company with the um, we have companies that are running. It's our job to entertain. If a thing entertains 10,000 people and 7,000 are, are not entertained, that's democracy. They should understand it's democracy. That's how democracy runs because what happens if 2.3 million people elect this guy and then 2 million say, you know, we don't like him, he becomes the president because 2.3 million like him and 2 million don't. So. I think the same thing should be taken into consideration when we do comedy that yes it might not be as to your desired channel or as to your desired um, plan as, as, as government but people should be allowed freedom of expression because one way or the other we 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 saying word on the street we saying what people are saying but we saying it in a in a in a hilarious or in a satiric way MCing is totally a whole different different ball game uh, from from social media skits. Okay, when I do social media skits, I've understood my audience. I've understood what they want, but every event is a different event, and you need to know the audience the moment you start interacting with the audience. So. Being an MC is 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 a is a okay. I do I do different events. I do from corporate events to to social events, events like weddings, events like birthdays, graduations, and whatnot. Um, for corporate events, you understand they will call you in and. They
they will tell you law do's and don'ts of their company if it's um if it's on a religion they would cause they a lot of things and then if it's on a, on a social event there's a little bit of religion there you have to understand age differences because on a social event you have got your grannies you've got your little ones you've got your younger generation you've got so you need to have everyone entertained in a day, in, in a short space of time, you need to make sure that the go goes go home entertained, the um, younger generation goes home entertained, and um, all that put together makes a good MC because you can't just entertain, you can't just come in and say, I'm, I'm here to entertain the younger generation. You can't just come and say, I'm here to entertain my, my daughter because it do what is your child. No, you can't. You have to entertain everyone and also you need to have authority if you are you're going to be an MC you have to have authority it authority starts from your dressing authority starts from your 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 looks your man no, not not really your looks but your 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 presence your, your physical presence you need to have that that authority when you're running an event <music>